Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Sarah Luckert. And I'm Bethany Biggenhill. Here's your news now. Relay for Life took place this weekend in the Dixon Center. Let's take a closer look at the event. The American Cancer Society Relay for Life is a life-changing event. Cabrini had a chance to raise money to help people stay well and get well by finding cures and by fighting back. We're representing Delta Xi Phi Multicultural Sorority here at the Relay for Life and we're really excited. A lot of us have personal reasons why we relay and we're just excited to stay up tonight. We're also excited to see our um, one of our sisters perform tonight so it'll be exciting. We're excited for a fun night and staying up all, all night to raise money for cancer. Um, and we're eating shortly, so that's, that's what we're really excited for. But, and then after that, we have activities and uh, games and other things, so it should be fun. We're all excited to uh, support our teammate, Tim Sales. Uh, it's his night. We worked hard for this. The night consisted of many activities. In honor of cancer survivors and those who have passed, many speeches and ceremonies were held. This year's event, which took place in the Dixon Center, had 316 participants, 38 teams, and raised just under $16,000. Check out www.relayforlife.org for updates and upcoming events. Mainline Restaurant Week is back for its second year. Restaurants in Radnor along the Main Line and in the Philadelphia suburbs are offering discounted and price-fixed menus from April 23rd through the 29th. Menus will feature discounted lunches, as well as three-course dinners. The event runs through the end of the week, so if you haven't checked out both the new and old restaurants, make sure you don't miss out on the special. For those planning on voting in this year's upcoming presidential election in November, you should be aware that there have been changes in the law pertaining to photo identification. If you missed out on the vote in this week's primary election, you may have missed out on some important information. If you have a Pennsylvania driver's license that is not expired, you should have no problem. But for those who are non-drivers and have out-of-state licenses, ID requirements are much more difficult. Many student IDs also do not meet the new standards. Students should make sure their identification is acceptable before November's general election. In other local news, a two-alarm fire shook up a busy part of Center City, Philadelphia earlier this week. Firefighters blocked off streets for hours as they tamed the fire that spread in two apartment buildings. The smoke extended for blocking, forcing people out of their homes. A police officer and firefighter are injured in their efforts to put the fire out. This is the second fire that has caused injuries to firefighters just this month. Officials say they are not yet sure how the fire was started. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation with Bethany. New Jersey State Police are investigating a risky escort led by two state troopers. Witnesses reportedly saw two patrol cars escorting more than a dozen of luxury sports cars down the Garden State Parkway. The Lamborghinis, Ferraris, and Porsches all had tape covering their license plates. Allegedly, one car was driven by former New York Giants running back Brandon Jacobs. Witnesses said the vehicles drove recklessly weaving in and out of cars at estimated speeds of 100 miles per hour. The wild tour down the parkway ended at their destination in Atlantic City. State police are still investigating and declined to identify the troopers involved. The embarrassing misconduct by Secret Service members has sparked controversy in the United States and Colombia after the men allegedly brought back 11 prostitutes to their Cartagena hotel. Currently, the total number of people being investigated is 24, 12 Secret Service members and 12 military personnel. Six Secret Service members have left their jobs in the wake of the incident while five others are on administrative leave. In the midst of everything, the White House says there is no indication that any of the White House staff members were involved. Senator Charles Grassley questions the White House counsel's review and still waits for answers, including details of how the White House review was conducted. Unsettling discoveries continue across the nation, extending to Texas, where 19-year-old Angie Gomez was arrested after investigators found she was lying about dying of cancer in order to receive donations. According to Horizon City Police, Gomez allegedly received $17,000 in donations and gifts. Gomez told classmates in El Paso Times that doctors had given her six months to live. Gomez started the, to achieve the Dream Foundation supported by fundraisers. The foundation's website is no longer online. Police said Gomez's mother was not aware of the extent of her daughter's fundraising. It is now up to the court to decide if Gomez will return any of the money. 
That was your news across the nation. Here's Sarah for your trip around the world. Things are not looking so good for President of France Nicolas Sarkozy. Presidential candidate Francois Hollande gained momentum in his goal to capture France's presidency. Hollande won most of the votes in the first round of voting this week. If Hollande wins the second round, he will become the first socialist president since 1995. The ballot's biggest shock was when nearly one in five voters chose far-right candidate Le Pen, making it the best showing ever by far-right National Front Party. Sarkozy is demanding three debates before May 6th runoff and said he'll pull out of politics if he loses. According to French polls earlier this week, Hollande is predicted to win. An alarming announcement was made earlier this week by North Korea who promises to soon turn South Korea to ashes for insulting North Korea's leadership. Regular programming on North Korea's state television was interrupted with a special report declaring special actions will soon be carried out and named it South Korea's capital Seoul. The controversial long-range rocket made to celebrate the 100th birth year of North Korea's founder that cost nearly $1 billion played a role in South Koreans' criticism. Analysis believe that all the money could have fed North Koreans' hunger-stricken nation and are not worried about the seriousness of the threat considering the embarrassing fail of the cruise missile that blew up into pieces just minutes after takeoff. A court in Egypt is holding lead comedic actor Adel Imam three-month prison sentence for insulting Islam in his films in place. 71-year-old Imam is caught up in the latest case concerning freedom of expression against Egypt's high-profile leader. A lawyer with ties to Islamist groups brought the case against Imam, accusing the actor of mocking authorities, politicians, and offending Islam in his films. Even though Imam's films frequently top the Egyptian box office, his comedies do not have conservative Muslims laughing. That was your news around the world. Let's go to Greg with this week's tech report. Hey everyone, this week in tech, the next-gen iPhone is making news yet again. After the last two generations of iPhones have been released with the same chassis design, the new gen iPhone is rumored to have a new chassis design and to be made with new materials. The new materials will include liquid metal. Catalyst analyst Chris Jones told Wired via email, the next iPhone needs to truly stand out from the crowd. In other news, Apple officially announced that it will hold its annual Worldwide Developers Conference, or WWDC, from June 11th through the 15th at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Passes are now on sale for the low, low price of $1,600. But you better hurry. Last year, the conference sold out in under 12 hours. That's all the latest tech for now. I'll see you next week for even more tech news. Now let's go to Mary-Kate for this week's sports update. Despite losing to Marywood University by a score of 8-1 to one last Saturday, the Cabrini men's tennis team clinched the number two spot in the CSAC playoffs. The Cavs used their 6-1 mark in conference play to reach the playoffs for the second straight season. The Cabrini College women's lacrosse game against Winder University marked the final regular season home game for the Cabrini seniors. Cabrini fell behind in the early stages against the Pride, but finished with a 17-16 win. The Cavaliers men's lacrosse team netted the first nine goals of the game against the Newman University Knights last Saturday by a score of 22-4. The CSAC tournament starts on Wednesday, May 2nd. If the Cavaliers keep their CSAC win streak alive, they will return to the top tournament of the top seed. The, the Cavs are in search of the CSAC title in all spring sports. Now back to News Desk. Let's check in with Holly for this week's entertainment update. Oh, how lucky we all are. E! News has just confirmed that the Kardashians have extended their contract and the whole world will be graced with their presence for another three seasons to see if they can keep up with this famous family. And still, I'm not quite sure why they are famous. With Courtney pregnant with her second child, most likely we will get to see her deliver her new baby the way she did with her first, Mason. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I highly suggest Googling it because it's quite hilarious. The most famous of the clan, Kim, is rumored to be dating rapper mogul Kanye West. Does anyone else hear wedding bells again? We shall see. Maybe the relationship is just a huge publicity stunt, but regardless, I'm sure we will all get to see it play out on the small screen. In celebrity baby news, E! News correspondent Juliana Rancic and her apprentice winning husband Bill are expecting their first child via a surrogate. The couple has publicly battled fertility problems and most recently Juliana has battled breast cancer. After everything this couple has been going through, it is great to see them finally have their own little bundle of joy. E! News is also reporting that Megan Fox and her husband, Brian Austin Green, have announced that they are expecting their first child together. 
Fox, who is 25, and Green, 38, married back in 2010 and have kept a fairly low profile ever since. This is the first child for Fox and the second for Green. He has a 10-year-old son from a previous relationship. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to stay tuned into location for all of your latest entertainment updates. Kiana Volney is the founder and current captain of the Cabrini Steppers. As a senior, she will lead the team for the last time in the second annual Step Show. Let's check out this week's Person of the Week. Hey guys, I am Melissa Webb with your Person of the Week. And this time we have Kiana Volney. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So you are the president and the founder of the Cabrini Steppers, correct? Tell me about when you started that team. I started the team my junior year, fall semester, and it has been a great experience ever since. What was your initial vision when you decided to start? My initial vision, I actually got the idea when we went to the Eastern game um, for basketball. They had like a dance team, and it's just a vision in my mind when they were just getting the crowd hype and just enthusiastic. I said, we need that something at Cabrini. So I decided, why not I start the team? And the vision is just to, for students who are passionate about stepping to get involved and just to bring excitement to the crowd when it comes to different campus events. And it's not only for females, it's for males as well. So do you think that you have been able to bring that to the campus so far? Definitely, I think so. Definitely Cabrini Steppers, I think we came a long way because we're a new team, but we definitely were able to market ourselves better um, through different flyers, open mic nights, different campus events during the time. So you had a step show last year. We did. And you have a second one this year. Yes. Tell me about some of the differences. Last year, you know, it was our first time. So it's kind of like a trial and error. You learn from things that we could improve on. But this year is going to be really, really exciting. We have a lot of additional add-ons, such as the Eastern Step Team. They're called the Blaze Step Team. Mm -hmm. They'll be performing with us, as well as Norristown High School Eloquent Steppers. They'll be performing with us. We also have a live DJ. So you're a senior and you'll be leaving. Yes, I will. It's bittersweet because it's kind of like my baby. I started it my last year, like I said, junior year. So it's just bittersweet, but just knowing that someone else will be taking over, it will be in good hands. So who will be taking over? Victoria Waring, she's a sophomore now, junior next year. She'll be taking over next year. She's on a step team as well. Well, it was a pleasure having you. I wish you so much luck in the future. Thank you, same to you. Now back to the news desk. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Sarah Leffert. And I'm Bethany Bigenhill. Have a great week, Cabrini.